So our first speaker in this session is Dr. Debernath Mishra. He will be speaking on a critical study of medicinal plants in Sanskrit medical texts of Madhava. Thank you, Dr. Mishra. Good evening to all of you. Uh, since morning, we have been listening to Ayurvedic uh, plants, drugs, and so many other things, and especially of Charak Sahita, Susrut Sahita, Astangrade. And Madhav Nidan is known to all Ayurvedic uh, practitioners, Ayurvedic students. But there is a book. There is a manuscript available, five manuscripts are available. There is one edited book on Madhav Chikitsa, which has compiled the entire Charak Sahita, Susur Sahita, and Astangrade with respect to treatment. And it is exactly in the line of Madhav Nidana. While studying this, as a postdoctorate fellow in Leiden University on my research, I came across several things that I wanted to point out in front of you. And I will honestly request, because while seeing all the slides, I was very much pained to see the plant names being literally written as the wish. In taxonomic way, in botanical way, in identity nomenclature, in ICBN rule, such type of things should not be allowed. And that is where we are lacking in presenting our Ayurvedic products properly. That will be my last part of presentation. So here, as you all of are practicing Ayurveda, you all know that to become a good Ayurvedic practitioner, there are three things required. And that's what I said, the success of Ayurveda lies in correct reading of the texts or the verses or the medical compendiums. And then the full understanding of the Sanskrit meaning of it. And finally, the taxonomically correct identification of plants the botanical identification, the crude parts, because there are several things remain here that if I start speaking on it, it will take long time. But I know how present day Ayurvedic uh, uh, texts or that which have been translated or being transliterated or being translated to different forms are changing the original Sanskrit meaning. We know Bastram Bhave Sutram Dadyat but that Sutram Dadyat has changed into Mutram Dadyat. That's very unfortunate. We are no more understanding that Sanskrit critical Sandhi and the uh, analysis of this. Similarly, we are also not giving proper emphasis on plant taxonomy in Ayurvedic studies. Hardly, I, I saw many people are talking about Ashwagandha, Satavari and so many things. But I'm sure many of you must not be knowing that asparagus or satavari has nine species and out of that six species do not produce root tubers. And only three species containing root tubers contain satavarin, the glycoside in it, which acts as the active principle for your medicinal purposes. But when I collected the samples from the market, none of the roots are containing root tubers of satavari. And when you make the product out of it, how can it will show the efficacy? Okay. My second, therefore, it is essential now for all the Ayurvedic practitioners to understand Sanskrit equally, to become confident in the plant taxonomy, and also to know the correct crude drug parts. So my general findings here, that there are total drugs of plant origin in all the Sanskrit medical texts belong to 600 to 800 only. All the medicinal plants, we are claiming about thousands and thousands, but if a correct reading has to be done of a Charak Sahita, Susur Sahita, or Madhav Chikitsa, there are 600 to 800 plants are only found. And out of that, Madhav Chikitsa also contains the maximum plants in Jorat Chikitsa, both in Charak Sahita or Susur Sahita. Jorat Chikitsa chapter contains the maximum plant names, almost all, all about 182 plants out of 600 plants. And these plants are in line, in alignment with the parts used in general for all medicines or all diseases and also for uh, this uh, treatment for fever, except in Sarak Sahita, only one example of lichen or it is sometimes called as algae has been referred. Otherwise, all plants are of higher nature. Here, by default, all of you know that in Ayurveda, 
the medicinal part means it is root or it is been previously said that it is all the rhizome or root together is mula part but gradually there are different parts have been incorporated as per practice so therefore it is high time now to understand which part because in the text only sanskrit word has been explained and the parivasa and the other uh, translators or other literatures when you have to take into consideration you can understand which part you have to use about the plant therefore it is very difficult to uh, understand that which part you have to take from the sanskrit word just saying that it is yashta mad doesn't mean that you know which part has to be taken it is by practice it is by uh, study the literature however this slide shows about uh, how much maximum part that is root and rhizome takes place the macro study says that all the 600 to 800 plants belong to deciduous forest areas not to evergreen and not to temperate regions in indian content it is the proper deciduous vegetation that has made the maximum plants as medicinal plants those 600 to 800 plants and if you look at the families to which these plants belong surprisingly you will find that maximum plants belong to two families one is asteraceae that is sunflower family there are maximum plants belong to sunflower in herbaceous conditions and another is belonging to uh, one is asteraceae that is called uh, uh, sunflower family though there are few more of uh, families are present from taxonomic point of view it is necessary for every ayurvedic practitioner to understand that to which family it belongs to because of this the substitutions or the adulterations uh, have been done my uh, two more slides are there my critical observation that the several hindi names are substituted to sanskrit names they are showing different taxa altogether it is a crime that when they don't belong to the same group just because the hindi translation has been given to the sanskrit name i have given several examples have been given uh, so many examples that uh, are being interpolated or being adulterated you can see that uh, so many names i have specifically given that the hindi names or the marathi names or the local translations have not given the correct justification to the sanskrit names so therefore i have given also so many names i have given at the top which do not have equivalence in either the local languages therefore they are substituted very often they are substituted this is the sanskrit name which doesn't i did not find i took one year of my research to study only one chapter that is madhav chikitsa jora chapter treatment of fever but i did not find the entire botanical literature i searched to equivalent words for this somehow my two more slides uh, will be showing that in present day market products these are also giving us wrong informations for example the sanskrit names are never been written properly because in english when you say ramo rama and rama all three as r a m a but it doesn't show the gender and it make a lot of differences so the sanskrit has to be written with diacritical marks and unicode for the world understanding today in most of the uh, uh, recipes we don't find this similarly the botanical names are never written as per icbn rules violating the entire common sense of plant name translations and these are the products therefore i wanted to so bring to your notice that look at all these products they are neither showing the correct sanskrit name nor showing the correct botanical names of the plants neither it shows also that which part has been used in this product so therefore the whole world do not believe in this system this is the correct way of a plant identification plant name botanical name with authority most of the slides shown since morning i did not find in all the honor honored speakers in their slides the name of the plants being given properly and as a taxonomist it was very much insulting me i was feeling very much pained to see that they are they are been written in any form in any name that was not correct one and so it has to be changed my other observation i i made some clinical observation data collections from many ayurvedic doctors but as i am finding i am saying there is no clinical data viable for statistical analysis and also there is no yes my my time is over yeah <laughs> the last one <laughs> the taxonomic uh, uh plant names have to be written properly this is what is my simple uh submission to all of you that in future research please 
take care of Sanskrit name and taxonomic name properly. Thank you so much. <laughs>